So this setup I've got for the tomato plants is known as a Florida weave. Basically you set, now these are, uh, I think I got five and seven foot posts out here. So I just kind of took whatever I had extra. Five and seven foot fence post, T post. They're spaced about every three or four tomato plants apart. When you transplant your tomatoes out here, you start them off with one row of, that is a, a twine, I believe it's made out of some sort of a plastic. It actually says like gardening twine or tomato twine. I'll leave a link down in the description for it. Anyways, it comes in like a, I think I bought like a thousand foot roll. This is the second year that I've used it. I still have plenty left on that roll. But basically you start out with this bottom row of twine so when you plant your tomatoes they're probably what about 12 to 18 inches tall if you started early like i did that's how tall they were so you basically space this first one kind of low to the ground you're basically just giving the tomatoes something to support them now the way that this works is you just go down so each one of these lines that you see goes from this pole to that pole it doesn't go all the way to the end. It only goes between the two poles. You run these so that you can kind of see at the bottom here, the first row, I just leave open with a gap between the two lines. And then I put the tomato plant right up through it. Because basically you're just giving a support so the wind don't knock it over. But as they start to grow, you tighten these lines up so that there's no gap. And the way that you do that, you have to like look at the line comes starts here where it's tied off it comes down it goes on this side of the tomato plant then it curves around and goes on the other side of the next tomato plant then it curves around and goes around this side and it's kind of making that figure eight all the way down through here around the tomato plants so that way there's some pressure that holds it up then as they grow you just keep adding more lines now the other thing you want to do too, tomato plants do not like for their leaves to get wet. You kind of see how this right here is touching the ground and look at the end of this. How it's already ate up with bugs and got dirt on it. Just any place that there are tomato leaves touching the soil, just pinch them off. And you can actually see all the way down through here or any place you got weeds growing next to them also, pinch them off. But you can see pretty much all the way down through here there's no leaves touching the ground. I kind of left that one there for this video. Same way on the other side. There's no leaves really touching the ground anywhere. Tomato plants do not like that. If you let leaves touch the ground, one of two things is going to happen. Well, one of three things are either going to get pest, diseased, or they're going to root. So keep any stems and leaves from touching the ground once you start this method. And that really works if you're using cages too. So, again, this is known as the Florida Weave. This is only the second year that I've used this method. I didn't even record last year because last year was just to kind of get used to the method and how it worked. And then I'm going to do updates throughout this year. Uh, these tomato plants have been out now probably about three weeks. They've really shot up in size. My pepper plants, I got mixed pepper plants here. They're not doing near as well. Some of them are doing great. Some of them just don't seem to be doing that all that well. Those down there, I'm not sure what those are. They're probably habanero. I think I had cayennes here. Habaneros over there. Either way, we'll figure it out as they grow. I have to go in and look at like what my sheet says. Then I got some corn. Then I got some okra. Back there, I've got cucumbers and winter squash. I've got carrots and peas over there along with uh along with uh yellow potatoes i can't remember gold potatoes i can't remember what i actually planted this year i got beans there i've got watermelon and cantaloupe there i've got all my brassicas under that shade cloth i've also got some onions over there the first round of onions i got a second round of onions left to go and this is actually a mixed variety of tomatoes now, when I pull up the shade cloth, I've got another 10 tomato plants going over there. And some other fall crops will go there in like July and August. But I think I ended up with uh, 40 tomato plants this year. Most of them grown. So, 
I'll kind of go ahead and explain this to you. I've got Romas, and then I've got just a mixed variety. Some I just wanted to try, some I've had in the past. They're cherries, they're slicing tomatoes, and uh, but the bulk of these are Romas. Then the bulk of the next 10, Romas is a determinate variety, which means they sprout and they bloom all at once. The rest of these are indeterminate, which means they sprout throughout the year and grow as many tomatoes. As long as they're sprouting, they grow tomatoes. The next ones I've got going over here are also de indeterminate, and that's an Amish paste and San Marzano paste tomato. And uh, they will also bloom and produce throughout the year. They'll probably be planted over here where these are at. Maybe in a week or two, I've, I think I've still got about two weeks before the rest of my cabbage is ready. Uh, some, which I've got three varieties of cabbage and some are actually ready now. I actually had a head of cabbage yesterday. And uh, some will be ready in another week or two because they they vary from 70 to 90 days of harvest time. But once all the cabbage is gone, then I'll put the tomatoes over there and I'll start planting my fall garden, which is mostly going to be Brussels sprouts, broccoli cauliflower so anyways hope you enjoyed thanks for watching as always god bless you god bless your families god bless your homesteads